Isaiah chapter number 6. And I don't know if these verses aren't some of the most precious to my heart in the entire Old Testament. Uh, it really is so out of character for what was going on in that day and what goes on in our day. What happened to Isaiah is something I long for every time we come in the doors. The Bible says in verse number 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. Can I say, if he's not high and lifted up in your heart and in your mind, you're never going to see what Isaiah is about ready to see. Uh, it's not part of the message, but I'll say this. Too many people were looking at the king, King Uzziah, for instruction, for deliverance, for help, uh, for guidance, for wisdom. It's no accident that the year he died, Isaiah then sees the Lord. A lot of times there's something in your life that you're looking to for answers, and until that dies, you'll not see the Lord high and lifted up. Uh, a lot of times it might be through social media, it might be through your job, it might be through uh, even uh, uh, looking at the preacher. You're uh, looking for guidance and wisdom from somewhere other than the Lord, and you're never going to get it. When that dies in your heart and life, and Jesus is high and lifted up, you're going to get what you need. Hmm? Did not Jesus say, and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me? Too many people uh, have too many selfish motives and ideals in their life that is guiding them. They don't consider the things of God. Even in a church setting, I'm not even preaching yet, but even in a church setting, if you're not careful, you'll want to take precedence or to be noticed uh, or to have some part where other people will look to you. Jesus doesn't share his glory with anybody. Hmm? It's not about you. It's not about me. It was a great day in my life when I got to the end of myself and I no longer had an ego when it come to come to church. I don't have to be the one on the platform. Matter of fact, if you paid any attention at all Sunday when God got to moving, I went back there. I didn't want anybody to have any idea that I had anything to do with what was going on. Well, it's all about Him. And there are so many people that it, they hadn't got to that point yet, Brother James. If they're not the one doing the singing, or if they're not the one doing the testifying, if they're not the one that's involved somehow, they don't see how God can bless. Hmm? And listen, I ain't even preaching yet, but let me just go back here and talk to my dear West Virginia sister. Hey, Miss Billy. Good to see you. There are some people that if we have testimony service, I say you got to test, they're going to testify or die. Yet 1 Corinthians 14 says that we all can't have a message. We all can't sing. We all can't have a testimony. We'll be here. We'll never leave. Uh, but there are some people, it's always about them. And you can tell because their testimony doesn't glorify God. Did you hear that dear lady testify? She was broken. Did you hear that dear lady testify? She was broken. You know when God's in it? When there's brokenness. Hmm? That's what I mean about having it burning in your heart. Because then it's no longer about you. It's about Him. Isaiah said he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And then he goes on to say this. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. This is the only place in the Bible you find the seraphims. The only place you find them in Scripture. Say, so what are they? They're an angelic being that was created for one thing. And that's for all of heaven to hear them proclaim how holy Jesus is. Look what it says. Each one had six wings. With twain or two, he covered his face. And with twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. 
the whole earth is full of his glory. Now, this isn't the message either, but I just want to kind of throw this at you. You hear uh, uh, folks a lot of times in ignorance, but then uh, uh, there, there's the charismatic bunch of folks, when they talk about going to heaven, they talk about dancing before the Lord, they talk about hugging the Lord, they talk about all they're going to do with the Lord. These angelic beings that have never sinned. Think about that. They won't even look on the Lord. They cover their face with two of their wings because He's so holy. They won't look on the Lord. It would affect our looking on the Lord by faith if we'd have the same humility that these sinless seraphims have. Hmm? All of a sudden, he's not the man upstairs. He's not our big brother. I've heard him called that. No, he's the Lord of glory, the Lord of hosts. He's holy, holy, holy. The earth, my dear friends, the whole earth, he says, is full of his glory. Now think about that. How can the earth be filled with his glory? Because those things that he's created, he saw that it was good, and they speak of his glory. And those things he's redeemed, those trophies of grace that Brother James sang about Sunday, speak of his glory. Hmm? Anyway, that's not the message. I'm, I'm working to get there. Verse 5 said, Then said I, Woe is me. For I'm undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth, and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, uh, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for a good spirit already here tonight. Or even as I begin speaking, I've noticed some sobriety. And Lord, what a blessing. Lord, we are on holy ground because this place has been hallowed to your name. And Father, I pray that you would certainly burn in our hearts the seriousness about the Word of God, that we might apply it, that we might certainly uh, 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 do as it instructs, and that we might allow it to change us for your glory. Now, Lord, we live in a perverse land. And, Lord, we are faced with opposition. And, Lord, uh, your people have been beaten up on since Sunday, and they certainly need some help. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd help us tonight. I pray you'd uh, certainly encourage and edify the saints of God that they might truly be able to lift you up not only with their lips but with their lives, that others can see that they've been with Jesus. Now have your will and way, and we'll bless you for it, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice a few things about these wonderful verses. The first thing I want you to notice is the sanctified place. In verse number 1, we find that he saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Can I say, there is a sanctified place. That word sanctified means to be set apart. There is a place that has been set apart uh, that is of the utmost importance. Uh, the place where uh, 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 Isaiah saw the Lord high and low, uh, lifted up uh, happened when he was at the temple. Uh, 
the place that was set apart for the honor and glory of God. Uh, now, my dear friends, uh, 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 this is more than just brick and mortar where we came tonight. Uh, this is more than an assembly hall. Uh, this has been a place that has been sanctified, uh, set apart uh, for us to come and worship the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, for us to give Him the glory that is due His name, uh, for us to be able to come uh, and adore Him uh, and to praise Him uh, and exalt exalt Him, for us to be able to come, take the bread of life, and hear it, and apply it, that it would affect us so much, that when we leave this place, they too can see the glory of God in our lives, and long to come to this place and know Him. There is a sanctified place. Listen, I know God can meet with you on a lake. I know God can meet with you anywhere. He's God. But God said uh, that Jesus loved the church uh, and gave himself for it. Uh, uh, that the church of the living God uh, is full of grace and truth. Uh, uh, the church of the living God uh, is a place uh, that is set apart uh, uh, for to be God to be worshipped in the midst of his people. Uh, thank God for the church in the New Testament. 112 times you find the word church. 110 of them mean the ecclesia or the local called out assembly. Jesus Christ loved the church. He loves his people, but there's something about the church when his people come to and assemble together and meet together. That's why I live stream in scriptural, because we didn't get to assemble. So we see there is a sanctified place. I want you to notice the supreme presence. In verse number 1, he says, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. In verse number 3, he says, And one cried unto the other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Uh, in verse 5, he says, uh, uh, closing out that verse, uh, For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Uh, make no mistake, God was there. Hmm? Amen. Now, friend, I, I can tell you wholeheartedly, I don't know a whole lot. But Sunday, I knew God walked through here. There's a difference between having church and then God taking over the church. And he took over Sunday. Hmm? He just uh, chose uh, to roll back the, uh, uh, the very uh, 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 curtains of heaven uh, and step from glory right into our midst. Uh, I don't know how he did it. Uh, I don't know when he chose to do it. Uh, all I know uh, is about midway through Brother Clint's opening prayer, God said, okay, uh, I'm on the scene. Uh, that's all I know. Uh, I don't know much after that. Uh, only that God showed up. Uh, and it sure is a, a blessing when God's in his house. Hmm? We see the sanctified place. We see the supreme presence. And then we see the supernatural phenomena. Look in verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from off what, Miss Brandy? The altar. Enough said. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin is purged. Uh, you say, what about all that, Brother Doug? I don't know about all that. There's a whole lot in the Bible I don't know about. Uh, but Isaiah said, a seraphim uh, uh, took a coal off the altar, uh, put it on his lips, uh, and told him that his lips uh, had been purged from their sin. Uh, it was a supernatural phenomenon. Uh, listen, uh, you can get saved going around the bend of the road in a 57 Chevy like Brother Ray did. Uh, you can get saved in your living room. Uh, you can get saved. Brother Mike will be here uh, uh, come Sunday. I've heard him preach about getting saved in the field. Uh, uh, you can get saved uh, anywhere God deals with you. Uh, but can I say something? Uh, I got saved in church uh, and it was a supernatural phenomenon. Uh, it was bigger than me. Uh, all I knew uh, is that I can to Jesus. I don't remember what I prayed. I don't remember how long I prayed. All I know is I knew I had to get to the altar and get to Jesus. My friend, I got up from the altar. Guess what I had? I had Jesus and he had me. Something supernatural happened that night. I was a sinner lost without God, but God left heaven, came and met me at the altar. I washed me in his blood moved in in the person of the Holy Spirit and changed
changed my life forever. Uh, my sin was purged that night. Uh, there was a supernatural phenomena. Then I see a sovereign plea. Look at verse 8. He said, also, I mean, if God saves it, not enough. But God never does the mere, mere, you know, mere lowest requirements. He always does above and beyond what we can expect. Hey, the night I got saved, I didn't know all that I got. I just knew I was different. I didn't know that I got peace that passes understanding. I didn't know that. I didn't know I had a friend that stick it closer than a brother. I didn't know that. I didn't know I had a song that would get me out of the glooms and dooms. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I had promises that I could stand on when heaven and earth passed away. I didn't know that. I didn't even know that I had a mansion over the hilltop. I didn't know that. All I knew is that I was clean and I was different. And hey, that would have been enough. But hey, I've learned in 46 years, God did a whole lot more that day for me than I could have ever imagined. And now he's about to do something for Isaiah. Because he never does just the minimum requirements. And look what he says. He said, no, nah, I got purged. But also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I. Send me. He not only got saved that night, he got called that night. Now listen, I'm not going to over-spiritualize this. You can't volunteer to preach. God's not Uncle Sam looking for enlistments. Now there's a Baptist preacher in Texas that says he volunteered one day. I'll just leave that there. Can I say... It is a specific call to the ministry. Now Paul got called the night he got saved. Some of us it takes years for God calls and some may never get called to preach. But Isaiah heard a call that night. He heard a conversation in heaven. The Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost are talking and they say, Whom... Shall we sin and who will go for us? And by the way, if Jesus wasn't part of the Godhead, God would have said, who would go for me? Amen. Who's the us? Amen. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. Isaiah heard the call and he answered the call. He said, Lord, here am I. Send me. Hmm? We see the sovereign plea. God called. And Isaiah answered. Mm. But then I want you to notice the sobering placid. The word placid means admission or acknowledgement or confession. Look at verse 5. Isaiah says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Amen. Now, let me just stop here. Isaiah was not a wicked man. Isaiah was a believer. Isaiah was an Old Testament saint before Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah was at the temple. Hmm? But when Isaiah saw God, he realized what he really was. When he saw the Lord high and lifted up, and he saw the Lord in all of his glory, and the smoke of the train of God's temple filled the house, and when he saw those seraphim crying, Holy, 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 and he got a glimpse of all of that, he said, I am undone. He said, I am nothing. When he saw who Jesus was, and then he saw himself, 
all of a sudden he didn't feel like he had a right to the house of God. He didn't feel like he had a right to carry his Bible underneath his arms, although he didn't have a Bible to carry underneath his arms. He didn't feel like he had a right to sing in the choir or to play an instrument or to uh, uh, put out showbread on the table of showbread or to make certain there was oil in the lamp of the house of God. No, he said, I am, under, he said, I am nothing. And he is confessing to God, I am undone. I am nothing. Do you ever feel like you're nothing? Do you ever just feel like you can sit in church and God's a blessing and you're sitting there thinking, I am nothing? I want to preach with God's help on when Jesus ignores your nothingness. Yeah, you did business on Sunday. And yesterday you felt like nothing. Aren't you glad he ignored your nothingness? Aren't you glad when you got out of bed today and you read that devotion and you fell on your knees, he just swept right by. He ignored your nothingness. He said, you may feel like you're nothing, but you're awful something to me. Huh? I'm glad he ignores our nothingness uh, when he looks at us uh, in pity and love. Uh, and in our flesh we are nothing. Uh, but he ignores that uh, because to you and I we're something. Uh, uh, because when he was carrying that cross uh, down the Via Della Rosa uh, and when he yielded himself and they nailed him to the cross uh, and when they suspended him between heaven and earth uh, and the blood ran from his brow uh, and ran from his hands and his feet he was looking ahead in time hey, and it pleased him to be bruised because you are something he said I'll die a dozen deaths for him if I have to because they're worth it to me and he shed his precious blood for our nothingness because we are something I'm glad when he ignores our nothingness and I'm glad when he just steps into the midst of our nothingness and lets us know we are something to him. Uh, Amen, after thinking about when he ignores our nothingness, can I say, first of all, it will humble you. Amen. That's what happened to Isaiah. That's why he's saying, I am undone. Woe is me. Where, uh, can, I, can I go out on a limb right here? Isaiah the prophet, when he gets called to be a prophet in this chapter, without a doubt, he's the most spiritual man in Israel. And he says, I am undone. Woe is me. He's saying, I'm nothing, Lord. Why? Because when he saw Jesus for who he was, it humbled him. And when Jesus ignores your nothingness, it humbles you. Who was Isaiah that he even got to see the Lord? Who are you and I that we even got the Lord to walk through here on Sunday? Uh, who are we that we got to enjoy His presence? Uh, you realize we had more God here Sunday uh, than a lot of churches will ever have uh, in all the years they meet. Uh, why us? I don't know, but I'm glad He ignored our nothingness. But it'll humble you. It'll humble you when God's presence is around. Uh, and He... He ignores how unworthy we are to have His presence. And He shows up anyway. You see, in our flesh, we can't do anything to please God. Amen. It's only when we're obedient in our spirit to the things of God that He is glorified. When He ignores our nothingness, it'll humble us. Can I say something else? It will honor us. It'll honor you when He ignores your nothingness. When he comes by your way and tells you, I don't see you as nothing. You sure do mean something to me. I, I bled and died for you. Boy, when he chooses to meet with you anyway, it honors you. Are we not honored to know the Lord? Is it not an honor to speak His name? 
Is it not an honor to represent him in a lost and perverse world? Is it not an honor to stand up and say, yeah, some may think I'm deplorable. Some may think I'm non-essential. Some may think that I'm a weak-minded because I have to believe in a God. They can think whatever. Jesus is my Savior. I am not ashamed of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of the cross. I'm not ashamed to be called a Baptist. I'm not ashamed to be a part of Emmanuel Baptist Church. I love the Lord. And He is great and greatly to be praised. Is it not an honor? When He ignores your nothingness, it honors you. And I say this, when Jesus ignores your nothingness, it will hunger you. It will drive you. It will motivate you to want to see Him again. Amen. To want to be around Him again. To uh, certainly uh, see Him do great things again. Hmm? Brother Clint told me Sunday that he felt if he didn't teach that lesson in Sunday school, he would have died. When God begins to work in your heart, begins to hunger you for more of Him, that's what happens. There have been several occasions in my Christian life where God's presence has been, presence has been so real I was afraid to breathe. I certainly was afraid to look up because I was afraid I would die. You say, what does that do to you, preacher? It gives me a longing to get back to that place again. I've been so close. You know, y'all think I'm crazy. I really don't care. I was there. I was on a mountain in North Carolina praying one time with some other preachers. And we heard the Lord walk up behind us. We heard him crunching in the leaves behind us. You said, you're crazy. I was there. I said, what would you do? I didn't dare look up. So I was scared to death because his presence was so real. Miss Mary, about midway through our praying, I, I ran out. I couldn't even pray no more. His presence was so real. I just had to get as low as I could get. I said, what does that do to you? It makes me want to get there again. Hmm. I'll never forget being in that hotel room, La Quinta Inn down in Meridian, Mississippi. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Phillips stayed the room number. He tell you everything about that night. When the Lord walked in that hotel room, when that boy got to praying for his daddy, and I smelled the Lord. He said, I don't believe you. I don't care. I was there. You asked Jeffrey. He smelled him too. Huh? He hasn't been able to say myrrh since then because it's myrrh now. Did you ever get a smell, the sweet smelling savor of the Lord? It'd do something to you. Yeah. Say, did you look up? No, I was afraid to look up. Yeah. Say, what's it do to you? It creates a hunger. Yeah. I sure would like to smell him again. Yeah. Hmm? You get close enough you can smell him, you're ready to go to heaven, friend. That's all I can tell you. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, say, preacher, you're crazy. I don't care. Call me whatever you want to. I was there. Hmm? Yeah. There's a lot of people said, Isaiah, you're crazy. You didn't see the Lord high and lifted up. He didn't care what they said. He was there. Hmm. I'm here to tell you. You ever let Jesus walk into the midst of your nothingness and do something supernatural for you, it'll create a hunger in you for His presence like you've never, ever seen it before. Like you, you, No matter how close you get, you want to get closer. You want to see Him do more. Oh, it'll do something for you, friend. It'll do something for you. When he ignores your nothingness, it'll humble you, it'll honor you, it'll hunger you, but it'll haunt you. Isaiah said, Woe is me. When you experience his presence like that, you won't take his glory. You'll make sure he gets it. It'll haunt you to even think about robbing God of His glory. Amen. It'll cause you when it gets to moving like He did Sunday to take a step back and let Him move. Oh, yeah. You don't want to get wherever, what, get in the way of whatever He's doing. 
Uh, and preacher talk. Can I give you a preacher talk? Well, us preachers get to talk about days like Sunday. You know what we say we do? All we do is direct traffic. That's all we can do. That's all we do. We, at best, that's all we do is direct traffic. We just get out of the way. I said it Sunday, he did more preaching without saying nothing than most preachers ever do in their lifetime. Hmm? It haunts you to not be sensitive to what he's doing. Hmm? I listen to a lot of preachers and I'm thinking, that boy don't have a clue. Some of the statements they make, I mean, they don't have a clue. They certainly haven't been where Isaiah was. We are nothing. But sometimes Jesus just ignores our nothingness to show how wonderful he really is. I thought about this. When he ignores your nothingness, it'll heterize you. That word heterize means transform or change you. Isaiah was never the same after chapter number 6. Those two events I just spoke of, and I've seen other events, but just the two that I told you of, why do you think I keep bringing them up every now and then? Because it changed me. It impacted my life in ways that I can't even put in words. Hopefully what happened Sunday impacted your life to where you don't want to ever have a dead service again. Where you want to go a little farther with God. You want to see him do a little bit more. Yeah. Hopefully it caused such a change in you, you haven't been able to quit talking about it. You haven't quit meditating on it. Trying to figure out what all God did. That's why, that's why I, I, what did all God do? Huh? Huh? I talked to Brother Greg, and I love Brother Greg. He's my friend. He's my best friend. We talk quite a bit. And I told him, I said, all I can tell you is I was looking for the smoke. That's what I told him. That's all I needed to tell him because he knows the rest of the story. He's been in some places like that. And they're scheduled to go to revival next week, he says. He said, preacher, if it breaks out, he said, I know we're wanting to have revival, but if it hits, let me know. I'll bring a bus load up because all I'm interested in is real revival. Don't think of that. You say, what did you say? I just gave him the highlight. Just the smoke. Matter of fact, when I told him, I said, all I know is something happened in that teenage Sunday school class. And I said, and Brother Clint said, when we get in the sanctuary, let's go to the altar. And he told me that Zachary said, well, let's, not, let's just go on down to rock. As soon as I said rock altar, Brother Greg said he started getting them God bumps all over him. He said, I was just looking at that picture when we was at the Rock Altar here a few years ago down there. When we was down there at the Rock Altar and somebody took pictures. He said, I was just looking at that the other day. You got to talk about that Rock Altar. We was having time on the phone. What, what are you saying, preacher? When Jesus ignores your nothingness, it changes you. Yeah, we're unworthy. Yeah, we mess up and get in the way and do stupid things. But Jesus overlooks that because he sees our heart. Because in our heart, we don't want to mess up. In our heart, we don't want to get in the way. In our heart, we want Jesus to get the supremacy of our life. We want him to be glorified and magnified. We want every time we come through the doors to see people get saved, to see people get blessed, to uh, uh, see the Lord do great mighty things. That's what we don't want. Uh, and God sees our heart. He knows our heart. Uh, uh, sometimes we can't even tell him what we want, but God knows. Uh, and when we uh, uh, blow it, our failure and mess up uh, and don't say the th right thing and get in the way and don't have the faith we should have and all that. Jesus sees all that nothingness uh, and he chooses to ignore it because uh, he knows deep down uh, hey, we want him and what a blessing. Uh, quit trying to be perfect. Just be saved. You'll never be perfect. But if you're saved, you're saved. So just be saved. 
Just act like a saved person. Don't go walking around beating yourself up because you're not perfect. And here's your newsflash. You'll never be perfect. But you're always going to be saved. So just walk around like you're saved. You say, but I messed up. Uh, I didn't testify what I should have testified. Uh, I got good news. Jesus walked in in your nothingness regardless if you testified. Uh, he showed up. Uh, he did a work. Uh, uh, he knows. Uh, just be saved. Hallelujah. And enjoy the ride. Because huh? he ignores your nothingness every day of your life. Because here's the whole key. He don't see you as you are. He sees you as you're going to be. Because the day you got saved, you know what he sees when he sees you? He sees himself. You see all the faults and failures. He doesn't. That's why he walks into our nothingness. Because we are something to him. How tonight? The Lord certainly wants to continue blessing. And I'm not satisfied till we see the smoke in the train of his temple. The train of, of, of his holiness in the temple. So keep paying the price. Keep just being nothing. And let him be the everything. And he'll keep walking in the midst. He'll keep doing work. He'll keep showing up. He'll keep uh, reiterating how holy he is. And that will inspire us to be more like him. Isaiah is known as the great prophet of his day. And he was the great prophet of his day because Isaiah was nothing in his own eyes. And when he was nothing, Jesus stepped into the middle of his life. So just be a zero and let Jesus be the hero. Just be nothing and let him be the everything. Just keep paying the price. No telling what he'll do. Was it very difficult for God to show up Sunday, rearrange everything and save Natalie? Was well, no problem for him. So if it's no problem for him, why do we have a problem with it? Why don't we just let him do it? Amen. Hmm? So let me ask you something tonight. Are you nothing? Because when you realize you're nothing, He's liable to just step in the middle of your nothingness. But when you think you're something, yeah. He'll leave you alone. Yeah. I'd rather be nothing Man. and Him be the everything yeah. than me to be something and Him nowhere to be found. So I'm going to ask you tonight are you nothing? The Bible says, humble yourself beside the Lord, He'll lift you up. That's it. Amen. So why don't you become nothing? And watch and see how big a something he really is. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, get us home invitation. I'm done. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you for a place we can come. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Lord, I pray something supernatural take place now. I pray somebody that's cold and indifferent on God. Lord, will get sober and right with God. I pray if there's any others like Natalie was Sunday, came to church, but was unsaved. I pray they'd come, give their heart to Jesus. I pray for the saints of God who are closest to you, not to be satisfied, but the longer to be closer. Lord, help us just become nothing. And you just be the everything. Lord, I'd be satisfied with that. Lord, have your way in this invitation now. Speak to hearts. Help folks do business with God. Maybe somebody needs to do business with somebody else. I don't know. Lord, you do the directing. Help us do the following. Well, thank you, Lord. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.